Good morning. I am Pastor Marisa Brown Ludwig, and I welcome you to worship this morning at First Church of Christ in Longmeadow, in the United Church of Christ. This has been a tumultuous week, and these times of such unrest in our country are not over. In a few days, we will inaugurate a new administration, and many are wondering where our country will be when that transition comes to pass. A pandemic continues to rage across our country and take new victims. And you have decided to come here with us this morning and join together for a word of what? Healing, hope, strength, vision. How wonderful that you have. And I welcome you this morning. Because here at First Church of Christ, we proclaim the miraculous love of Jesus Christ, embodying the one God who entered time and history, who is Emmanuel, God with us. In this worship, we come to be nourished by the word of God through scripture and praise and song, and you are welcome, regardless of age, ability, class, culture, the color of your skin, your sexual identity, your gender expression, or any of the other ways that we human beings tend to separate and isolate ourselves. All of you are coming to us virtually across a computer or a TV screen. But no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. This is God's house. So leave behind any darkness that you may carry. Come closer to the fire and enter the light of the good news this morning. Our scripture today is from the Gospel of John, where Jesus is beginning his public ministry and inviting disciples. A new follower, Philip, goes to tell Nathanael about Jesus, who says to him, Can anything good come from Nazareth? And Philip replies, Come and see. And on this Martin Luther King Jr. birthday weekend, we consider the impact of this great civil rights leader who also was a disciple of Jesus. The scriptures tell of regular people being called by God to step forward. And we'll hear from Psalm 139 about the intimate knowing that God has of each one of us. What did it mean for Dr. King to be called to serve? What can it mean for us today? Let us enter now into worship. Won't you join me in our call to worship from the Iona Abbey of Scotland? The words will be on your screen for your part. Just and merciful God, you speak through the prophets, challenging us to seek peace rooted in justice. Help us to hear your urgent call. Loving God in Jesus, you change our lives for good, challenging us to work for reconciliation. Help us to see your way of truth and love. With us, God, your Holy Spirit moves us to action, challenging us to live the good news. Help us to respond wholeheartedly, here and now, to say yes. Amen. And now we come to the sign of peace. This weekend we remember Dr. King because he showed us how much our world today still needs faithful voices like his, one that did not waver in speaking truth to power that demanded a revolution of hearts and minds and refused the temptation of hate. Can we glimpse the vision he held so clearly of a day when all people will stand together regardless of difference, equal before God and each other? Martin Luther King, you stand among the great prophets of all ages. We honor you and we remember. May God help us to be more like you. Holding Dr. King's vision in our hearts now, let us turn and offer each other a greeting of Christ's peace. So if you are with someone now, won't you turn to them? And if you are by yourself, then say it back to me. I say to you now, the peace of Christ be with you always. Amen. Now join with me, won't you, in speaking the words of our opening prayer. You'll find the words on your screen. Source of all things, you meet us in every face 
in every voice, in every life in the rainbow of creation. You call us like Philip and Nathaniel to follow you. You beckon us to come and see, meeting you here on this day and this time. We will listen and we will walk with you though we do not know what lies ahead. Help us to say yes like Philip, like Nathaniel, like Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., whose life we remember today. Amen. Won't you now lift your voices with mine from wherever you are and sing our opening hymn with us? You'll see the words on your screen. Somebody's calling my name Hush, hush Somebody's calling my name Oh, hush, hush Somebody's calling my name Oh, my God, oh, my God What shall I do, what shall I do Sounds like Jesus Somebody's calling my name Sounds like Jesus Somebody's calling my name Oh, sounds like Jesus Somebody's calling my name Oh, my God, oh, my God what shall I do? What shall I do? O Holy One, may the light of your star illumine our hearts, that we may truly perceive your word in scripture and song, in prayer and in preaching. Amen. The first reading today is taken from Psalm 139 verses 1 through 6, and 13 through 18. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me such knowledge is too wonderful for me it is so high that I cannot attain it for it was you who formed my inward parts you knit me together in my mother's womb I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made wonderful are your works that I know very well my frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O oh God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. The second reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, 
Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathaniel asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathaniel replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Here ends the readings. Thanks be to God. I find it deeply compelling to be in the midst of such a torn open time in our country as I stand here before you. With last week's storming of the Capitol building and this week's threats of armed protests planned at all 50 state capitals between now and the inauguration next week. By the time you hear this message, more threats may have unfolded. And in the middle of all this is the birthday weekend of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. While many of us celebrate him as if our whole country embraced his message, the events of the past weeks certainly belie that to me for we certainly are seeing a deep backlash to a more inclusive way of life now, as virulent and maybe going even farther back than it has in decades since the time we still openly lynched black people and partied as we did it. There has been an increasing surge in the past few years, but especially in these last few months and weeks of a feeling of permission in our country to openly be intolerant, racist, homophobic, anti-Semitic, Islamophobic, misogynist, and beyond. When did the American vision of liberty turn against the American vision of democracy? How can our protection of personal freedom for us become a rejection of freedom for others? It is crucial that we continue to lift up Dr. King and so many leaders of difference who have taken our country's constitution at its word. Even though its forward-thinking vision has always been well beyond its actual living out, especially at our country's founding, but all the way up to the present time. Let's remember and hold before us that as soon as Dr. King started becoming a public figure for civil rights, and as he continued on speaking out against Vietnam, actively naming injustice in our land with directly nonviolent and legal means, Dr. King and the civil rights movement aroused terrifying violence of those against his message. Peaceful marching and demonstration was met with horrific aggression, beatings, and killings. I don't have to tell you this, probably, but it is critical to remember that he was always controversial. Despite speaking a message of love, he drew towards him a strong response of rage and hate. And though we celebrate him on his birthday, we cannot forget his assassination. And we have not stopped seeing violent response to calls of inclusion and increased care for others who are not the same as we are whoever we in power see ourselves to be. That has not stopped since long before Dr. King's time, though it has taken a different form across the decades since he died. So many LGBTQ neighbors and friends have died violent deaths by those who feel they don't have a right to be equal among us. That we march in pride every year and we have the Trans Day of Remembrance to say their names and keep them visible. This year of the pandemic has seen such a tearing open to visibility of the still deep injustice and the sufferings of systemic racism in our country that remembering Dr. King and his times authentically is the very least we can do around his birthday. And it is way, way, way too small. But I always come back to wondering, how did 
Dr. King begin to speak up? And how did he keep going as it got harder and harder and the threats on his life and those whom he loved got more frequent and deadly? When you read his writings, it's clear that his relationship with God and his intimate experience as a disciple in prayer and in action did not permit him to stay silent and held him through the days of increasing fear and pushback. As we hear the intimate awareness of God expressed so tenderly in Psalm 139, I wonder, did Dr. King know that kind of love too in his own prayer life? As we consider today the calling of the first disciples of Jesus in our scripture, I wonder about the calling of Martin. When Jesus began his ministry, the people he comes from live in an occupied land, oppressed by the dictators of their time, barely holding on to the thread of a hope that a new leader, a new kind, was foretold by the prophecies, might actually come who could liberate them and bring them to a better life. Philip is eager, apparently, to hear a new word, but his friend Nathaniel is a bit more jaded. Philip says, we think we've found the one we've been waiting for, and he's from Nazareth. And Nathaniel replies, apparently sarcastically, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And rather than trying to convince him, Philip simply says, Come and see. And it doesn't appear to take much of an encounter for Nathaniel to turn in wonder at Jesus and say, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. And we know that as the scriptures progress, Nathaniel does get up and follow Jesus in the days to come. So what has happened here? How would Nathaniel or anyone go from doubting and being jaded, an oppressed person, to one who knows such hope, that his hope defies all he has ever known and believed possible. Maybe Nathaniel was changed because Jesus saw him, saw the good and the true in him that others hadn't seen. Jesus saw a new Nathaniel into life. So many things can block our view of ourselves, can't they? The harming words of someone who raised us, or a friend who hurt us, or an abuser who took away our dignity. Maybe Nathaniel looked into Jesus' eyes and saw unmasked love. And in that moment, Nathaniel was free from anything else that had kept him back, free to see who he himself was, Perhaps that's what enabled him to see Jesus, too. Can anything good come out of Nazareth, Nathaniel had asked? Come and see, said Philip. And he did. Scriptures like Psalm 139 or the calling of Nathaniel, these tell us that God sees us as we truly are and loves us, wants us, calls us, to who we may yet be. Psalm 139 says it well as the writer speaks to God, here in this version from the message. You know everything I'm going to say before I start the first sentence. I look behind me and you're there, and then up and ahead and you're there too. Your reassuring presence coming and going. This is too much, too wonderful. I can't take it all in. On the one hand, it can be really validating to hear that God sees each one of us that clearly, calls to us as the person God created us to be. But, oh, how frightening it can be also to be truly seen. Perhaps Nathaniel could have said, can anything good come out of me? I know that even now I often take comfort that people can't read my mind can't look deep down inside to all that is inside me because I don't even know all that's in the recesses of me. When I feel the most insecure, a voice from down where deep in my depths will whisper up to me, 
They wouldn't love you if they knew. I wonder if you ever feel that way too. James Lindbergh writes, we are not mass produced, but custom made. He tells the story about young Rabbi Zusia, who was quite discouraged about his failures and weaknesses, said an older rabbi to him, when you get to heaven, God is not going to say to you, why weren't you Moses? No, God will say, why weren't you Zusia? So why don't you stop trying to be Moses and start being Zeusia that God created you to be? It is a fine line to walk when we consider God's call to us, not succumbing to despair, thinking we are unworthy or unlovable, but also not succumbing to arrogance, thinking that we in fact know the mind of God and can do no wrong. In a time such as these that we are now living through, we might well think, I've got nothing that can contribute to this. Catherine Matthews Huey suggests, how might it alter your self-image to think of yourself as God's work in progress? Now, what about that? More like a raw gem taken out of the earth before it's fully carved, faceted, polished, bright. When you see raw stones, you can see glints of their color and beauty, and they are very valuable. They're just not finished. Can anything good come out of me? We might ask. Come and see, says the gospel. Come and see. We know from Dr. King's personal notes and recorded prayers that he struggled with fears and with doubt through many long nights of his work in the civil rights movement. I think it is this quality of perseverance in the face of doubt that I most celebrate about Dr. King. He had no way to know how far the civil rights movement would go or what might happen in the world after he was gone. Every march he went to, every rally he spoke at, every leader he met with, he didn't know what the next step would be. And look at what an amazing life he gave to the world before he left. Seeds that have continued to bloom long after him. God knows the work Dr. King picked up and carried so faithfully continues on and is not finished. The headlines of this year, of this week, our country's renewed self-examination about racism and oppression during the pandemic, the violence of this last two weeks, it can all make us despair for the vision that Dr. King saw. God's vision of our world standing together in equality and justice, no matter the color of our skin or what kind of difference we have among us. But it is not promised for us, just as it wasn't for Dr. King, to see the end of the road. Our call is to pick up the work we are called to do for God's vision wherever we are on the path, and to accomplish it with humility, with stumbling, with gifts, with talents, with faith that God will provide what we need, that we are indeed enough as imperfect as we are, and that God's power can accomplish in us that which it's set out to do. Maybe then if we look in God's eyes, we might see ourselves as Nathaniel did, one who is already precious and beloved and becoming, despite everything, beautiful and good. Can we be brave like Dr. King and let ourselves be loved by God, loved into who we are? Can we let that love deep enough into our hearts to find our courage and to let our light shine? Come and see. Look into the eyes of our God and be known. Come and see. And then stand up and follow. Amen. Please say with me now this unison response prayer by Reverend Steve Garnass Holmes. The words will be on your screen. O God of Martin and Rosa, 
of Fanny Lou and Harriet, of Malcolm, Mohandas, and Caesar, God of Tenzin, Desmond, and Malala. I do not ask to see the road ahead. I do not ask for power and brilliance. Give me passion. Give me gratitude for my companions and love for my siblings in this world. Open my heart to the oneness of all people that I may work for justice and healing, not because I ought to, but because I can't keep myself from my love. God of all who have suffered, all who have struggled, all who have yearned, we are millions. We are one. I thank you. Give me this day that I may give it back to you, radiant with hope. Amen. We come now to the time of prayer. You can go ahead and begin sharing in the comments on Facebook or YouTube the names of anyone or a world issue or event that you would like to raise up in prayer. But please remember that this is a public forum, so first names are all that is necessary. God knows the needs of our hearts. So now, 
please won't you join me in prayer? Oh God, you have searched us and you know us. We praise you for we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We can be so amazing at loving one another and we can also do such terrible, unspeakable harm. We are living through a time right now that is depressing and lonely, terrifying and shaming, and also galvanizing, a test of who we are, who you know us to be, and who you know we can be. Help us to find healing and courage to support each other in the rebuilding of this life for all of us. To those who are exhausted or despaired, those who have jobs that frighten them, and those who have lost their jobs. For those who are sick and those who have died, for those who are the caregivers of all of these. For those who are trying to heal and protect us and for those who feel no one is there for them. You know and see them all. You know and see us all. Help us, O oh God, we pray. Can we, like Philip and Nathaniel and Martin, feel your eyes on us? inviting us to follow, loving us, can we be able to say yes? May these words from the Iona Abbey remind us of who we are. We hear the good news that Jesus brought, the affirmation of the value of every human life, the gospel that commands us to seek peace with justice, and we understand that costly reconciliation is at its heart. Yes, God. You are with us in this world. Yet we see that good news denied by apathy, mocked by prejudice, hatred, and refusal to forgive. And we feel helpless in the face of suffering. Where are you, God? You are present where human beings of goodwill still choose to live in your way, caring for creation and for each other courageously speaking truth to power. You are there when elderly people share their wisdom and street children dance in the rain. You are present wherever in this broken world hope is alive. Thank you, God, for being present with us now. Amen. Won't you say with me now the prayer that Jesus taught us to say? and say it in the words that are comfortable for you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. We come now to the time of offering where we share with a world in need from what we have been given. Know, friends, that every gift from, for someone else, no matter how small, swells out into the world like the rippling rings of a stone tossed upon the water. In a time of scarcity, we must be creative in how we give back out. For now is a time to be most generous of our time, our talents, our money, our hope. For anyone watching, we hope that you will send in your offerings to this church through the mail or the electronic ways that we are now providing on our Facebook page and YouTube, this live stream service. Please continue to give of your time and your help to people in need throughout our community, your neighbors, your family. All these things come together to become our gifts offered up to our God this day. Now please join us in singing praise to our God through the doxology.
We bless now our gifts. O God of famine and harvest, drought and flowing rivers, we know you are with us in all times of need. When we rise to meet the cries of those around us, make these gifts farther reaching than we could ever accomplish alone. Bless those who give and those who will receive, and may all these things go to glorify you, the one who comes as tender as a newborn child. Amen. And now as our service draws to a close, here are some announcements about our church life this week. We offer church school on Sundays by Zoom. And so after this service, we have a class for grades K through 2 and 3 through 5 today between 11 a.m. to 12 noon on Zoom. On next Sunday, January 24th, our 6th and 7th grade class will attend worship and then meet by Zoom at noon for a sermon talk back with our teachers. Next Sunday is also our monthly family worship, which happens on the fourth Sunday of the month at 11 a.m. on Zoom. We gather friends of all ages to this half hour of Bible, message, prayer, and song designed around our littlest ones during our worship, uh, our church school time. We do this to deepen how we learn and grow in our worship together, believing it is a critical part of our journey as a newly developing Christian. That will be at 11 a.m. on Zoom next Sunday, January 24th, Family Worship. To register for any of our classes and programs or to simply find out more about these programs, please watch your weekly e-newsletter from us or reach out to us at office at firstchurchlongmeadow.org. Next Sunday, January 24th, we will be welcoming our new interim senior pastor, Reverend Dallas Bradel, to worship. That will be a special service also on climate change with guest preacher Reverend Dr. Jim Antal, sponsored by the Environmental Justice Team of First Church. And we will get to meet Reverend Dallas for the first time, too, in that service. So it'll be a big service, a lot to be rejoicing about. Please join us and hear a powerful word about stewardship of the earth. Then later in the week on Thursday, January 28th at 6.30 p.m., the First Church Environmental Justice Team is hosting a climate discussion Zoom program with Reverend Antal, continuing from his Sunday preaching. And we'll be inviting local interfaith communities to join us to look at how we use our investments, not only of time, but also money, to advocate for the earth. More details on that will be in our e-newsletter, or you can get them at office at firstchurchlongmeadow.org. And now, as our spirit and our service comes together for closing. Won't you rise in body or spirit to sing out our closing hymn? The words will be on your screen. has taught us sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us facing the rising sun of a new day begun let us march on to victory is won god of our places our God where we met you lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world forgot you 
shadow beneath your hand, may we forever stand true to our God, true to our native land. Thank you for being with us in worship today. Please remember that I am here for you during the week, and you can reach me by calling the church or by emailing at office at firstchurchlongmeadow.org. In a moment, we will say together our benediction, and then I invite you to stay on for a few more moments to hear a virtual choir piece. It's called Let It Rise by Holland Davis, sung by the Chicago Church of Christ Virtual Choir. Thank you to them for making it possible. And now, as we go forth this day, let us say together this affirmation of our discipleship based on words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The words are on your screen. I refuse to believe that we are unable to influence the events around us. I refuse to believe that we are bound by racism, war, and injustice. I believe those around me are my brother and my sister. I believe in dignity every day and that our brokenness can be healed. I believe we can overcome oppression and violence without resorting to it. This means I seek to reject revenge and retaliation. I remember hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can. Amen. <laughs>